President Joe Biden has tapped Vice President Kamala Harris to lead the White House effort to tackle the immigration challenge at the U.S. southern border. AP's Sagar Magani reports. It's similar to the Obama administration's early years, when then-Vice President Biden was tasked to lead the Iraq pullout. This time, the president's turning to his number two to tackle a surge of young migrants at the border, a challenge that threatens the administration's legislative agenda. If she speaks, she speaks for me. The president says she'll deal with the Northern Triangle nations of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras to tackle internal issues that drive immigration. Needless to say, the work will not be easy. The U.S. has seen a dramatic spike in border encounters the past two months. Sagar Magani, Washington. With most of the votes counted, Israelis still do not know who won Tuesday's election. Neither Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu nor the main challenger have any way to put together a majority coalition. Linda Gradstein reports from Jerusalem. It's going to take a while until Israelis know the final results of Tuesday's election, the fourth in two years. That's because there are more than 450,000 special ballots from Israeli soldiers, hospital patients, and diplomats overseas that have yet to be counted. And since Israel is such a small country, even a few thousand votes can swing a parliamentary seat. Israeli analysts at Israel's fast COVID-19 vaccine program, which has already reached 80 percent of Israel's adults, worked in Netanyahu's favor. The fact that he is currently on trial for corruption has not affected his support, which remains similar to the past three elections. Linda Gradstein for VOA News, Jerusalem. Myanmar's junta freed hundreds of demonstrators arrested during its brutal crackdown on protests Wednesday, while many businesses in Yangon remained shut and streets were deserted after anti-coup activists called for a silent strike. Reuters' Emily Wither reports. They streamed out by the busload from a jail in Myanmar's city of Yangon. Hundreds of demonstrators arrested during the country's brutal crackdown were released Wednesday by the ruling military junta. In the country's biggest city, Yangon, many businesses remained closed. The strike comes a day after the bloody crackdown saw its youngest victim laid to rest, a seven-year-old girl. About 275 people have been killed in the bloody protests. The Myanmar office of the UN's Children Agency says at least 23 of the dead are children. That's Reuters' Emily Wither. Pope Francis has issued pay cuts for cardinals and others at the Vatican. AP's Walter Ratliff reports. Pope Francis is cutting salaries for cardinals, priests and nuns who work at the Vatican by as much as 10%. Francis says the belt tightening is necessary to save jobs as the pandemic has severely reduced revenues. Bans on tourism by many countries and other pandemic restrictions have severely reduced revenues at the Vatican museums, which include the Sistine Chapel, a perennial moneymaker for the Holy See. The museums are currently closed and will stay closed at least through the upcoming Holy Week, which normally draws many tourists. I'm Walter Ratliff. Kenya on Wednesday ordered the closure of two sprawling camps that host hundreds of thousands of refugees from neighboring Somalia and gave the U.N. Refugee Agency just two weeks to present a plan to do so. The Dadaab and Kakuma refugee camps in northern Kenya together host more than 410,000 people. Authorities in Nairobi first announced their intention to shut the Dadaab camp, which is closer to the border with Somalia, back in 2016, citing national security concerns. The UNHCR urged Kenya to ensure that those who need protection continue to get it and pledged to keep engaging in a dialogue Kenya's move comes as relations with Somalia worsen after Mogadishu cut diplomatic ties with Nairobi last December, accusing it of interfering in its internal affairs. A down day on Wall Street with all three major indices closing in negative territory. The Dow was off 0.01%, the S&P dropped 0.55%, the Nasdaq shed 2.01%.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.